Welcome back, everybody. BP is trying to defend its corporate image with a major ad campaign. Joining us right now to talk more about it is Jeff Sonnenfeld. He is Senior Associate Dean at Yale School of Management. And John Hoffmeister, who is former president and CEO of U.S. Operations for Shell Oil. He's also the author of Why We Hate the Oil Companies. Gentlemen, good to see both of you. John, why don't we talk a little bit about where you think BP is at this point. You say you think they've done everything they reasonably could at this point behind the scenes? I think in terms of the technical operation that they performed at the subsea, it's credible. There isn't any other company I don't think that could have done any better. It's frustrating. It took too long. But it's as good as you can get under these circumstances. I think, however, in the social and cultural, political realm, I think it's been a patchy job by BP. I think sometimes they've done well, other times they haven't. I, I, don't, I think they've had too many voices in the mix. And frankly, I think Tony Hayward stayed too long in the U.S. Let me ask you also, just these live pictures that we're looking at, it shows that there is still, or it looks like even more oil than was ever spilling before. John, am I right to look at that and think, okay, there's even more oil that's dumping out, or can we not gauge it by what we see here? One of the big risks, Becky, in this whole operation is the condition of the casing down inside the well. There are some experts who believe that the casing is not uh, integral, that it may be broken, in which case you could get a much wider flow of oil coming out of the reservoir. We don't know that at this stage, and, and I think that poses a big risk for the future of what might escape into the Gulf. The sooner they get those relief wells dug, the better. Right. Jeff, uh, BP has come out with this ad campaign. We've, we've seen newspaper ads every day and over the weekend. They rolled out uh, commercials on television that had Mr. Hayward speaking directly to the people. In your opinion, is this the right move, or should they be fixing this first? They should be fixing it first, and instead of paying the, the 50, 70, 100 million dollars for these massive campaigns, and if you find it on Google, you find it everywhere, is they ought to be out there putting the money in. They have 350 million dollars is supposed to go out to build these sand dunes, these burbs. Their, their money is supposed to go to the states, supposed to go to the injured uh, industries, the, the, the fishing and, and recreational industries. That money hasn't gone out. Instead of just spending the money, on spin, and this is uh, a very cynical approach. I think I really do think that uh, uh, the, the, the John uh, is exactly right, and I'd go a step further and say Tony Hayworth really should be replaced now. He, it'll be like um, uh, Clark Kerr when he was fired as president of uh, University of California by Ronald Reagan. He said, "I leave this job much as I arrived, fired with enthusiasm." He ought to be fired with enthusiasm. Wow, uh, but John, you agree with that or no? No, I don't. I, I think that under the circumstances. There are very few CEOs in any company in any industry that have been through what BP and Tony Hayward have been through in the last seven weeks. I think it's, it's, there have been patches where he hasn't done well, but overall I think he's done a credible job as best he could. Very few people have been through the trauma, the, the crisis and the trauma that this human being has been through. I think the real test of Tony Hayward is what he does in terms of restoring the investor credibility stakeholder credibility over time. He's got to set some priorities. He's got to figure out what to do with the portfolio to pay for this uh, cleanup. And I think that uh, he doesn't help himself by being in front of the camera. Yeah. I think he has a great alternative, Bob Dudley. I think you know, Bob Dudley should take over. You think of how you judge a CEO, um, personal dynamism, being accessible and, and making uh, you know, inspiring comments. It's been ridiculous. He's, he's a regular gaffe machine. Empathy, another critical dimension. He's been worried about him, you know, getting his own life back, and uh, I think it's terrible on that. The authenticity, you know, people, credibility, uh, John, I really think his is shot. You are a very honorable leader at Shell, despite a scandalous uh, parent company. Your own reign was, uh, was in fact, a fantastic one. Uh, uh, in this case, we have a culture of scandal at BP. His predecessor was driven out in scandal. There, of course, the North Slope of Alaska problems there, which uh, turns out senior management knew more about than they did about leaks there, about the deaths in Texas City with refineries that weren't cleaned, problems going back to uh, the Blades Bar incident where and Greenpeace awarded uh, his predecessor the uh, award for the uh, you know, best impression of, of an environmentalist. They've always gone for the spin. And in this case, if, if this is the best the industry can do, John, I worry. How about tell me what how Royal Dutch Shell's preparation is better, how Exxon Mobil's is better. Where are these contingency plans? And I think that's a fair question. I care less about what happens to Tony Hayward than I care what happens with the cleanup efforts on this, John. If, if you're in your opinion, you've been telling us over the last couple of weeks, there's more they could be doing in terms of skimming to get some of that oil off. Why are those steps not yeah, being I, taken? I, I think they, right. I think they've done a very poor job actually on the cleanup. 
I think they're locked in the old paradigm of dispersing and burning and skimming, and that doesn't work very well. I think they've avoided discussion on the idea of sucking and salvaging. If you suck the oil out of the sea with tankers with uh, big pumps or super tankers with their big pumps, get it out of there altogether, you have less rushing in on shore or into the marshes. And gentlemen, you know, our guest host today is... Get, oh, go ahead. Sorry. There, I think accountability does think matter here, going, Becky. Yeah, I think accountability matters too. And I'm sorry, John, what were, what were you saying? Yeah, I was going to go back to Jeff's point. I think it, you make some very good points, Jeff, and I think it raises the question, is BP America too big to manage from abroad? Is there too much there? Are there too many different cultures with the old Amico and the Arco culture? I think it's a great issue. And I was really leader... sorry when Royal Dutch Shell bought you guys out. I thought you were better independent. Well, uh, let's bring our guest host into the conversation sure. as well, Senator <clears throat> Kaufman. Yeah. Listen, I'm just concerned about how do we get here. Mm -hmm. You know, I think all too often we have these problems where we make an incredibly bad management mistake, decision mistake made by someone, and then all the excess is about how do we straighten it out. And I think we have to concentrate on straightening it out. But in terms of judging the the management of BP, this, this cleanup's been so slow because there were no contingency plans to deal with it. Number one, because they had promised. They had promised and they had promised that nothing like this would ever happen. And they actually believe their own stuff. I mean, when you start believing your own stuff, that's when you're in deep trouble. So trying to put something together like this on the fly, when you haven't done the, the work beforehand as to how you're going to deal with it, I mean, that's the real question to me in terms of the management. How can you have a management that made such an colossal mistake? and say they should be there. And I think the PR is really important. The empathy is really important. I think getting money down there to help those folks down there losing their jobs, the fishermen and the rest of it is absolutely important. But in terms of judging Hayward, I think you've got to judge him in terms of how the heck did we ever get to this point where we had, no, where we had so many things. Go back and look at all the things on the well, from the batteries right on down to organization not having a cap there. I, I just, it just seems to me to have been massive bad planning uh, that, uh, that no amount of PR is going to straighten out. Yeah, the CEO of a company involved in what happens at a particular drilling rig. There are levels of management. What the CEO does is right. set the temper, yeah. the mindset, the yeah. attitude, the culture yeah. that surrounds those behaviors. Yeah. So I think that the industry as a whole right. has counted on the blowout protector as the contingency plan. Why that blowout protector didn't work is the most serious question, I think, in the investigation of what happened on the deep water. Wait a second. Horizon. Wasn't, wasn't that thing tested do... under, under pressure that was less yeah. than expected? They dropped the amount of pressure they were testing it under because they were having problems with it. And Becky, look, the CEO is not responsible. that's a serious problem. And we've seen even the contingency plans were ripped off from other companies right. and they pasted these things together. I don't think it was ever taken management. The risk assessment was, uh, was pathetic. They never thought that this could happen. Yeah, and, and my, the term the CEO not being, I am so tired of hearing about CEOs not being responsible for big decisions. They made a decision to build in 5,000, uh, almost a mile down deep. They made the promise to the U.S. government, to everyone else, that nothing wrong, and the CEO is not responsible. The CEO is the person we all say who has the high. Washington Mutual, they well, don't know here. Senator Kaufman, you're exactly right. The boss is part of the brand here, and they can't fix the brand if they don't change the boss. Absolutely right. All right, Jeff, John, but guys. If, but if you follow your logic, if you follow your logic, right. then the, the CEO of every airline should be fired when an airplane no, crashes. No, 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 because when, if an airplane, an airplane, airplane crashes in the Gulf of Mexico. No, no, an airplane, if an airplane crashes and they have good maintenance, they have good maintenance record, it's like the mining disaster where they have record after record after record of, of uh, things going wrong. Look back on BP's history over the last commitment in terms of contingencies, there's a constant theme here. There are well-handled crashes there have been and hundreds badly of wells crashes. safely drilled, John, dozens sorry. of rigs properly executed. I think we have to look at who decided what and how did they go wrong on this particular rig. This was a deep water horizon problem. I don't see it as endemic across John, BP's operations in the deep water. John, tell the Senator that, that the reason that they had to drill in deep water is because Congress won't let any drilling uh, in shallow water. Well, we can have another long discussion about whether <laughs> she should even be drilling at all and whether we, how we're going to deal on oil and how all that works. I'm just talking and about deep in terms water of the horizon BP. is their responsibility. This is their right. contractor. You got yeah. it. They said they were going to do it. They said it was going to be safe. They didn't have any contingency plans. That's like zero. Toyota blaming the CTS uh, company, the subcontractor, or, the, or, or, the, uh, or Mattel if, if they did, but they didn't blame a Chinese subcontractor for the lead paint. They took responsibility. Although, Senator, are you suggesting that we shouldn't have any deep water or any uh, drilling in the ocean at all? No, I, I'm saying right now that's not America's way out of this problem. 
I think America's the way out of this problem is we've got to get down on our use of oil. All the drilling yeah, in the world is not, not going to... that is not something that's going to happen overnight. Oh, it's not going to happen overnight, but I'm just saying neither is it, these wells aren't going to be drilled overnight. New wells being drilled right now will be 10 or 12 years before if we lease them before they'll be drilled. So what I'm talking about, if we're going to deal with this problem, and people are right, we should have been dealing with it a long time ago. If we're going to deal with this problem, we're going to have to do something about decreasing our use of oil. And by the way, a lot of the oil that we drill offshore goes offshore. I mean, I remember well, when we put well, the last recovery. It's all fungible. fungible. Yeah, exactly right. But, it's all fungible markets. But so if you the take idea of the away. American people, but, but the offshore drilling is like it's going to help America because we're going to pay lower prices. We pay the same price for oil no matter where it comes from. John, what happens because of the six month moratorium on additional oil drilling in the Gulf? What happens as a result to the industry? Well, what happens is in the immediate term, nothing happens because these wells are predicted for 2011, 2012, and beyond. But if we don't get back into drilling, it's not going to be possible to catch this up. I think the rigs are all going to leave the Gulf, so the so-called six-month moratorium is going to be more like 18 months to two or three years. Prices, And if the Democratic Party and its positions on this don't take note, consumer prices could change the, the political landscape faster than an oil spill would change the political landscape. So I think the president is wise to keep this thing limited to what do we need to do to fix the current problem so we can get... Somebody's been saying for years, that's why we're on the spot we're in right now. Don't make any changes. Don't do anything that's going to cost you the pump. We should have cut down our use of oil a long time ago, 1978. We had the lines the, and, and, at the oil... We didn't do anything. A lot of it, the oil... Three, well, I Senator, I've been, and I've the been oil going all over move in terms of alternative and, and, energy sources. And Becky, in terms of your concern about looking forward, as once we get past this, we ought to be taking a look at everybody else's contingency plans. Plans are better. John, if we had the time, deep water uh, 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 drilling in the Gulf before any of these guys, that I'd like to know how Shell's plans are better contingency plans than these guys. I think you start with the, the engineering design of the well. Yeah. And I think we'll find out that the engineering design of this well was, was not up to standard, not up to snuff. You have to go through every step of the process and think about us. how do you reduce risk at every step along the way. Do you know, did you know how your wells were, were, were drilled at, at Shell? In general, how they were drilled. And I knew the risk assessment process if of you what know, was taking then place. All right. Gentlemen, I'm sorry we have to leave this conversation here, but we'd love to have you all back soon. Jeff, uh, John, uh, gentlemen, we appreciate it. And right. the senator staying with us. Mm -hmm. And coming up, uh, the road recovery getting bumpy. Friday's jobs report has... With growth predictions starting to get cloudy, that's next. Plus, GE Transportation and Norfolk Southern on the cutting edge of railroad technologies. The C